Side. He'll join us today. Here, as always, with my friends, Chris, Allison. Topic, you know, whatever Allison dreams up. We talk about it for about 40 minutes or until Zoom says, you're done. That's how we roll. This is true. You can find us on uh, the internet, binaryjazz.us. Find us on Twitter, binaryjazz.twitter. <laughs> That's it. That's the intro. That's the <laughs> I'm pretty happy that our Twitter is actually not binaryjazz.twitter. Is there something <laughs> horrible there? No. I don't think that Twitter is anything, but I would not want to be on Twitter. If Twitter is not. not anything. That is true. Yeah. Have you found your Twitter usage uh, decreasing? No. You know what? Um, it was. And increase. It was, yeah. seriously. And then um, I started following... Like I, I've started following a few select uh, like TTRPGers, um, and suddenly now, now like my Twitter has because Twitter added topics the same way that you can follow topics stick oh. uh, in Instagram, and so somehow it automatically subscribed me to the Dungeons and Dragons topic. So like <laughs> fifty, fully fifty percent of my of my feed is all like D and D and like other tabletop RPG stuff. And then the rest is like the normal crap, politics and uh, coding and like a small spattering of soccer related stuff. But like, it's much more readable now <laughs> and it's much more enjoyable. And like the people that are, that, that I follow or that I keep seeing in my feed and on Twitter that are in the TTRPG community are all like, like inclusive and aware of diversity and 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 like so it's like actually like like good stuff not just like everything is horrible all the time stuff and like fuck everyone so um no actually my twitter usage has gone up recently i love that it kind of just happened like twitter's like we're gonna do you a solid and just sign you up for this. yeah i i, I mean like the first it, time in the history of twitter it was really <laughs> weird like i and i don't know that i necessarily like asked for it but like now that it's here i'm not going to make it go away so yeah. i'm gonna have to look into that because there are definite topics that i'd like to just expand my twitter feed with because it's been lessening a bit but i also called my twitter feed a lot which oh, i really yeah. loved it felt so good i was just like oh, i felt like cleaning out a closet or something um and i discovered I, like I discovered something called the soft block so i felt very proud of myself for that <laughs> what's the soft block Soft block is when you block someone who's following you and then you unblock them and then they are no longer following you. Ooh. Oh, neat. Okay. Because I had a few, uh, I would say, hanger ons that I was just like, I really don't even want you following me. <laughs> sure. And like, if I'm going to be honest, they follow like 10,000 people. So it's not like they're even going to miss me. Um, I, for like two weeks, I decided that. Uh, I was just gonna like institute a two strike policy. Someone said something stupid once, like I say stupid things all the time. But like if if it struck me like twice in a week, like oh, like this isn't this is like frustrating me or angering me, then unfollow. Done. So I dropped I don't know a lot of people that are like in the in the WordPress space that I'm like, eh, fuck that particular person. Um, don't need their negativity or whatever um it feels good uh it does and so that was nice and then um ether rich the billionaire that owns the jags uh has decided to move another game over to london another home game over to london so now the jags play six home games in jacksonville and two in london which doesn't really matter i mean i have no vested interest in the team other than like they're such a big part of the jacksonville community and it really like that was when my policy of blocking people that were bringing negativity into the world like blew up because that was 50% of people I follow were Jags fans who were like, you know, kind of losing their minds. 
So like maybe I just won't use Twitter. Like maybe I just block all of Twitter, and that's that's. That's like why that's not? It. If it's so, not bringing you any, if it's not bringing you any happiness, then. Yeah, and certainly like this political season, it doesn't help. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe come back after next year. Or maybe not. Maybe there is a next year. Yeah. <laughs> I thought your ramble was going to be a nice way of telling me that you don't follow me on Twitter anymore. <laughs> oh, no. That would be like, if that ever happened, that would be like the lead conversation as to why. Like, let's break this down. What did Allison tweet about? Did it have to do with cheese or tarot? I oh, know I'm here for I'm here for cheese takes. <laughs> All cheese takes. There's, there's not enough cheese news. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of I, things and cheese. Yeah. Years ago, Chris, when you and I I think you and I had the original conversation about people calling vegan cheese Gary. Yes. And I really wish that that had stuck. I feel like I, my name would be associated with something cool then, you know? <laughs> but was it meant to be? No. It should still be. <laughs> we can get it to catch on. Yeah. With our with our loyal listeners our, of three. Our powers combined. I made that number up. I don't actually know if it's three. <laughs> we have we have a we have a uh, we have feedback from Danette, so we know we have at least one person besides Allison who, who listens to us. Hey, what is the pink glowy thing behind you? Or purple glowy thing behind you? Is that uh, new? Th the pink, yes, it is new. Uh, okay. So, um, plus one point for Gary for powers of for observation. Noticing, for noticing, yeah. yeah. Um, it is also rather obvious because it is kind of right by my head and glowing <laughs> pink. Um, what it Let's is... not diminish my successes, Chris. <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> um, so, uh, Aaron was... Um, the grow box. Yeah. Uh, Aaron was, was oh. cutting was cutting uh, up uh, euphorbias because we have a, we have a bunch of mature euphorbias and like one of them was like really leaning and so she was like cutting parts off of it and you can regrow them that's how they that's how they reproduce is if pieces fall off and they blow away then they just replant themselves um so we have a whole bunch more euphorbias like little things and we kind of moved around the plant a little bit and got a couple other grow lights in other rooms um, and so I said, well, I'll take one, I'll take some, whatever, um, put them in the office somewhere, but there's no light. Like, I mean, there's a window right there, which is great, but there's nothing for anything, like there's nothing in front of it. So like it needed something, otherwise you're just going to die anyway. So, um, got some, from grow lights and they're hanging off of the, whatever that thing is holding the, the, um, uh, the curtains up or in front of the curtains and it's just hanging down, shining my, my little, uh, UV lights on my on my tiny little euphorbias. Um, several things. First, for the benefit of people the, who don't know what desert plant is, what is euphorbia? A euphorbia is a type of uh, desert plant. That was my topic for today, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, they they can grow pretty big. Mm -hmm. um, typically, you get like a single stalk. Um, it kind of is split into almost like a triangle. Uh, with like spikes coming out on each of the corners and oh, then they sure. kind of get these branches that kind of come up um, So you'll have like one sort of main stock and then you have a bunch of branches that kind of come up like that Yeah, beautiful plant. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah Great. Are you concerned with the UV light blast in the back of your head all day? No. Okay, great Today's topic <laughs> <laughs> oh, Okay Today's topic, which we may or may not have discussed already, because I, it, when, it, when you have that idea where you're like, this is such a good topic, and then I'm like, it's so good that we probably have even talked about it at some point. That's why I'm so smug inner, inner wise. <laughs> anyway, today's topic is orbiculum. Orbiculum. <laughs> I'm like, have we Well, I mean, if this? we have, then I have no memory. Great. So that's fine. <laughs> I was about to say, if we've talked about Orbiculum, I'm going to feel really dumb when I probably make the same guesses this episode that I did the last time we no, talked it just, about it, but I don't I think recall I, it. I had this like inner, like, oh, this is such a good topic that I was just like, this is the type of feeling I get when I just am not remembering something. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, there's an easy way of, of finding out if we've discussed a topic. 
Because well, I did, and then do a search on binary jazz. <laughs> I searched it, and then a different episode came up, and I was like, "Oh, maybe we discussed it in that episode." But then I checked the show notes, and it wasn't mentioned, so I don't really know why it came up. <laughs> You're like, it turns out the WordPress search sucks. <laughs> hey, WordPress search doesn't suck; it just does what it's told. Just, I don't know why that means that it came up in search, though. No. Let's put, let's hook up Elasticsearch. We need Elasticsearch hooked up for our. Oh, yes, episode. absolutely. Yep, I'm going to do that. I'm going to replace we the totally search. need Elasticsearch. I wonder where I can get a cheap Elasticsearch instance now. Can we talk about how our bots just keep being installed? <laughs> we should talk about our bots. I don't think we've talked about our bots often We enough. haven't talked about our bots in a long time, it's true. <laughs> if you've made it this far into this episode. Or yeah, killing, where are we at? So we've topic. got... Uh, John Renator has uh, accumulated 62 Slack teams, have installed it at one point or another. The thing to me um, that's the most amazing is it's generated about a half a million. More than that. It's uh, 822,653. That's amazing. Yeah, like I said, about. It goes, up, it goes up roughly 100 new genres a day, hmm. which is, you know, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, when I, when I was preparing... Um, when I was submitting a talk for uh, for Bang Bang Con, which I didn't get accepted to, sadly, um, we were at like six hundred thousand because I was going to say something about um, it having generated a half a million uh, genres. Um, but now it's now it's more, and now it's almost a million. Uh, but the other one that's that's somewhat more impressive uh, is Gary's Ground Control Bot, uh, which has been installed on one hundred and fourteen Slack teams at one point or another. And actually, those I feel like people will probably actually care. <laughs> the genre <laughs> nader is one of those things where I think it goes in that like you, you it's, it's like one of those bots where like you install it in the background and then you forget that it's there. And then once one day somebody's doing all the slash commands like slash genre genre. And then, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I recently worked on a project for Ticketmaster and was really excited thinking genre nader will come in handy for generating a bunch of sample taxonomies. Hmm. Uh, never used it. That's sad. <laughs> I yeah. installed it though. Um, the um yeah i feel like uh ground control bot is one of those things where you're like you're really happy with it until it starts telling you about like launches in a part of the world you don't care about and you're like gosh how do i shut this thing up <laughs> so version two there will be a way to like say i'm only interested in launches by the following providers or countries or you know whatever my only but, problem with it is that it alerts me and then i think oh, chris and gary you're saying something and then i go in and i'm like oh it's telling me about a a can lot. you not mute alerts from you like can, a single? Yeah, you can thing? mute a channel. Yeah, I should, but but what if you yeah. guys say something funny and random? <laughs> um, I so of those 114, I think I'm only a member of 14 of the teams. That <laughs> I might be. I, I will say that I, I will like say four. that the Genrenator Twitter account has 15 followers. Really? Um, yeah. I don't even. Do I follow? No, I do. I do. I follow. Uh, and I, I, I do still quite enjoy the, the. Uh, I occasionally retweet it because I find them just so uh, satisfying. Occasionally, yeah. one will pop up, and I'll go, "Oh, this is just lovely," and it or funny or unexpected or, you know, it's not a genre that I expected to see today. That's a good thing. What's the uh, what's the ground control, uh, Twitter handle? I know I've uh, seen it because I, I know I, I follow it. Uh, you know, let's find out. I might need to go to the website to figure that out. It's high ground control. H-I ground control. That sounds about right. Uh, that I would one, believe Alice. That one's got 49 followers. Ooh. I love bots. I think my feed is probably... I should calculate, but I'm guessing it's at least 15 to 20% bots. <laughs> um, but it's so great. Like my Bowie bot, I have just, I haven't touched that in so long and it still brings me such joy. Your Bowie bot did something really weird uh, the other day I noticed. Like it came up and it was like, oh, no. Tuesday, 15, uh, 14 January, comma, zero, zero, comma, oh, 05, comma. Like it was like, it was like, huh. 
must be some like special days section that it just broke on or something. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll tr maybe I should pay more attention to it, but. Um, but yeah, normally I had that same thing. Like there was something that it, it did. Um, uh, I don't know. It tweeted something from, from outside recently and I was like, yes. And it made no contextual sense anyway. But I was like, yes. I often use it as a jumping off point for my soundtrack for the day. So like, I'll be like, oh yeah, what song is this? Okay, great. And then I like take the plunge down the rabbit hole. So um, what's the topic? <laughs> Orbiculum. Reticulated Python. Oh, Orbiculum. I knew it was something like that. <laughs> I think um, um, I'm worried about Chris burning his Orbiculum with those lights behind his head. No, no, it's not. It's fine. It's the skin, like the nape of your neck. Like there's your Very Orbiculum. Sad. It's not actually that close either. It looks probably closer than it is. That's true. It's you're good. like, it's approximately 40 yards away. <laughs> wow, you're right. It is not as close as I thought. It's several, his room it's several is feet. quite large. Yeah. <laughs> like those lights are as tall as I am. You just can't tell. It's a weird angle. Um, your orbiculum is, is is the place where your eyeball goes. Is oh in, in it your is. skull. It's your orbiculum. Isn't your orbiculum like a? I feel like you might be right, even though I I know you're not. <laughs> Isn't it the <laughs> so, tissue that covers so your right. brain? Separates your brain from your skull. Orbic maybe it's orbiculum. Orbiculum. Huh. Or I don't know. Now I now I'm second guessing. Well, as we like to do, let's break it into parts. Or <laughs> orbit. Or orbit. orbit. Can I spell it for you? A uh, no, but let's okay. let's do that. Yeah. All right. O r b u c u l u m. Or wait, one more time. Wait. O r b u c u l u m. Yeah. So okay. it could be orbiculum. It could be. Orbiculum. It's probably not that though. <laughs> um, well, orb means like round, like ball kind of thing. Right. Uculum. Oculum. Oculum. Ah, uh, yes. Study of. Latin root oculum. <laughs> it's clearly the study of of, of balls. <laughs> Spheres. I don't. I don't think it's a study of thing. It's probably not. Uh, the study is, of philosophy? <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, it actually sounds like a medical instrument, doesn't it? Uh, that's only because it, it... Yeah. Oh, is it the thing you used to get a, a uh, billiard ball out of someone's mouth? <laughs> I don't think so, no. Oh, that would have been so I, cool. I didn't know that there is a, a specific implement for that. There is. It turns out that a human mouth, it, it's possible to get, this is such a dumb thing for me to know. <laughs> Initial disclaimer, I've never put a billiard ball in my mouth. However, yeah, it's possible like... to put a billiard ball in your mouth, um, but you cannot get it out because you can't get leverage behind it. So your jaw effectively holds it in place. And you're, ah, ah, I guess unless it's attached to a leather strap or something. Um, the... That's the thing that you would think before you put the billiard ball in your mouth is, oh, what I need to do first though it's put a leather strap in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Just shove it right back in there. And then when I put the billiard bar in there, I can pop it out. Billiard balls are heavy. I don't know if I... Well, once it's in there, you don't have much of a choice because you can't get it out. So. It's true. Anyway, there's a medical implement that they use. Like ERs have them. And it's like a pair. It's like a clamp that goes in there and grabs and... Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oh, makes my jaw hurt thinking about it. It's been sort of an embarrassing conversation. <laughs> I don't know that that's uh, that's what it is. Uh, maybe an orbiculum is the instrument implement that you use to. to no, I'm not even gonna forget say about that. that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate where you were headed, and I also appreciate that you reeled it in. I was just gonna go have these with you, uh, Gary, but but then I decided that was not something I wanted. That was not a road I wanted to go down. <laughs> I'm amazed that Allison has any idea where you're going, but well, I have a hunch. No, oh. that's good. Just call it my my intuitive, my intuitive side. Um, I wonder if orbiculum is 
uh, what does culum mean? Uh, curriculum. Is it related? No, it's probably not related at all. I like where uh, you're going, although, but I have no idea what it would be. Yeah, I don't know what culum yeah. or culum comes from. I haven't gotten to that section of Greek. In the, was it Greek? In the, the book. The, the culum section. Yeah. Well, clouds can be culo. <laughs> I don't Thank know. Thank you for tuning into that. She has weather. It's like when I try to say Pete Buttigieg. Buttigieg, Buttigieg. Oh, I don't even try. I, I told Aaron yesterday, like, there's no way that he can, that he will be, would be able to win the presidency because nobody can say his name. Like, can you imagine, like, and now President Pete Buttigieg. But, but. Oh, maybe gosh, I, that's maybe I'll challenge my... myself. Maybe that'll be my challenge this week is to learn how to say it. Learn how to you say can teach judge. us. Buttigieg. Buttigieg? Yeah, I've practiced. You've practiced. Excellent. I have, Buttigieg. yeah. Buttigieg. My sister-in-law is a big uh, Mayor Pete supporter. Or was a month ago. I don't know. <laughs> Things change. You know. It's a rapid election, uh, Michael. Oh, wait. Maybe it was more than a month ago. Today's February, right? Today, <laughs> February. today is February. <laughs> it's Higher today. Done. Um, Any big February plans? Besides RPM that I'm, I've been too sick to do. You want to rock in the funeral scene these days, you know. No. Digging that. That seems like somehow appropriate for February, unfortunately. But yeah, not in Florida. No, it's like Pretty windy there sun. behind you. Can I tell you about my twenty-eight hours in um, Cleveland last weekend? Tell us about your twenty-eight hours in Cleveland. Oh my gosh! I want that now for the be- section called Gary's twenty-eight hours in Cleveland. I want that to be the name of your memoir. <laughs> 28 hours in Cleveland. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with, with that actual story. Um, that, yeah, that's a darn good name for my memoir. Um, where, was I, where was I going? So I landed in Cleveland, which is in Ohio, for those of you keeping score at home. And um, it was snowing, which I don't know what to do with snow because, you know, and uh, so I got out and I had packed like a little gym bag, which was like 70% um, a heavy jacket. And so I walk out and my parents are picking me up at the airport because they were already there. And I go, as you do at the airport, and I put on my jacket and I stepped out inside and it's like the snow is just falling. I'm standing there going, damn, it's really cold. I wonder how far away they are. And then it occurred to me, like no one else is standing outside. Everyone's waiting inside because it's warm inside. And it's just like, it, it's just the things like that I don't even think about. Um, so the remaining 27 hours and 45 minutes, it didn't snow for four hours of it, and that was it. And uh, that weather is bullshit. It sounds like uh, you were more prepared than a lot of your trips. I, uh, so it turns fun. out that vans are not great shoes for tromping through the snow in. Yeah. Oh, no. uh, it also turns out that that's like the best shoes I have to tromp through the snow anyway. So yeah. I had cold feet every time we were outside. Do vans have uh, do vans have any kind of grip? No, but the only time I fell was actually into the car I was trying to back into because it was really icy, Uh, and so I'm like, I knew I was holding under the door, and my feet slipped, and I went ass first into the seat, inch and a half below my butt. I'm like, well, that was. If you're gonna do it, that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I have to. I have to be careful with the shoes that I put on when it's when it's snowy and icy because I have some shoes. Um, had I guess past tense because um, the shoes that had the the worst grip were my docs that I had for forever but I recently like just for Christmas got new vegan docs and they have some grip oh. so uh, so now I, I can't say that but but yeah anytime I wore my docs like I like without thinking and and try to get could we have these uh, wooden stairs uh, so um, and that's how we get down to the car. So like anytime I went down the stairs, if it hadn't been snowed or if it was raining or it was any like snowy, icy, slushy, whatever, like I'd have to like go one step at a time and like be balancing like every step of the way, or I could legitimately fall on my ass and slide down the stairs. And it happened enough times that like, that like as soon as I'm out there, I'm like, right. And like, I have this sort of like paranoid fear now, like every time I hit those stairs and it's like wet at all, like, okay, like, carefully take 
one step at a time. Yeah. I have, um, I have, I like, I wore like, you know, khaki pants and, um, they were not very heavy. So I felt like I was just like standing outside in like just my jacket and nothing on below my waist. Cause it, it was just, I offered no wind protection. No, it was cold. My so socks, like you know, were kind of like long john stuff. weather. I, I guess if I owned long johns, I would have worn them, yeah. packed them, figured out how to put them on. There's a lot of steps in this process that would just be like needed. they're just like pants. It's not like <laughs> there's no figuring uh, out. Hopefully, I mean, I've, I've had to layer. I've had I've had to layer in the cold before, so that wouldn't have been foreign to me. But it just uh, like planning ahead for the cold weather obviously is i just i i don't travel to cold places i don't Except have any you do to. occasionally like you have traveled oh to i know places. this is a pattern for me yeah i travel to cold places and i don't know how to how to like organize my life in cold places and as a result i am cold <laughs> and that's it like i you know I haven't, I haven't gotten frostbite i haven't died so it takes a, quite a bit to, to get frostbite i don't know man i we had to like walk out to uh to the headstone and uh like I, it was maybe 200 yards from where the cards were parked those were like walking like they had cleared a path but there were more people than could stand in the path around so i'm standing in the snow and i'm like watching it fall in on my feet you know because it's deeper than my ankles and i'm like i might freeze to the ground here like would i just take my shoes off and walk back without shoes and then take my wet socks off in the like i was that you know I wasn't sure how I was going to deal with this. Thought maybe I'd become like a fixture there. Maybe they could bronze me. I could pose victoriously or something. I don't know. The per- <laughs> this is our our patron saint of perpetual mourners, Gary. <laughs> saint Gary. <laughs> Why is that scarf wrapped so quite, so tightly around his face while you can see his eyeballs? Well, <laughs> he wasn't prepared for the cold. It's Columbus. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I highly so, recommend a good pair of shoes. Yeah. Or boots if you do live in a colder climate i held off for a while and then when i finally invested in a pair it was totally worth it because soggy yeah. feet turns out they make you pretty grumpy <laughs> it's just I, yeah so cold so cold my feet are actually cold talking about this my toes are cold and it's 74 degrees where i sit. no 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 yep Boo. yeah <laughs> So, orbiculum. Orbiculum. Is it a, um, is it a kind of handheld sander? Pass me that orbiculum sander. I think that's close. It's specifically used in the circus, I believe, yeah. I'm not sure if you're serious or not. (laughs) (laughs) I'm really good at balderdash. (laughs) Um... There's a, um, there's a a Kickstarter game that, uh, uh, called Orbiculum? I know, called Pineapple, uh, that I just learned about. You can, if you are watching this today, it's probably still, campaign's probably still going. Uh, it's a game, it's sort of like, Pineapple Kickstarter. It's, it's sort of like, truth or dare except instead of dares it's it's or or like sort of like three truths and a lie except it's um everybody gets a card and the card either has a pineapple or it has a apple with a pine needle stuck in it or it has um some sort of a hybrid like half and half uh and and then there's the person and then somebody there's a person asking questions and the person asks a question like uh you know, what was the weather like last time you were in Ohio? Uh, And so if you have a pineapple, uh, you tell the truth. The weather was snowy and cold and I didn't have the right shoes and I almost froze to the airport uh, waiting area. Uh, if, If the card that you have is the apple with the pine needle sticking out of it, then you lie. Say, uh, the weather was uh, fantastic. It was the summer, um, and uh, it was really, really warm. And um, the dude that plays the Fonzie uh, came up and gave me a hug. Um, and if it's a hybrid, uh, then um, then you have to tell the truth, but tell the truth from a fictional universe. 
So like, um, it was really, really cold. And this dude on the airplane uh, was like taking off his socks and like flipping them around uh, in the airplane and, and like kept making comments to me. And he sold, he sold uh, uh, shower curtain rings in the airport. And I don't really understand what that was about, but he ended up like not getting his, his uh, rental car. And we ended up having to share a rental car uh, for like several days and traveling there. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know why that there, there, yeah. Balderdash is where I was going with that. It, it has, it seemed like it had contextual, uh, relationship to, to the show. It was a similar sort of. I like the sound of that. Yeah. I feel like it might depend on who I play with though. Yeah. It's, it's a certain, it's a, it's a, it's, yeah. I, I we've we in this family don't have very many party games mm -hmm. and every once in a while, not very often, but every once in a while, there is some sort of a gathering of people of adults generally, uh, wherein it would be nice to have a party game that didn't suck and wasn't cards against humanity. Yes. Um, and you so we've decided that we need to invest in some party games. Yeah. Are party games always like conversation inducing games or can they be like donuts for donuts is a fun game. I feel like it's a party game because it's a short, simple learn game, but it's not like a dialogue. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, but I think, I think the thing that makes a party game, a party game, I mean, the, the conversation is definitely a thing, but there's also needs to be like sort of a low barrier to entry because a lot of people only play party games. Um, and they do yeah. so because like they don't have the patience for like you know a euro board game um i mean like sushi go is a good one you know yeah like there's but game. i think that, that i think there's like there's a definite there's a definite um in my the way that i would define a party game there's a definite like lean towards like games that um uh do are, are like conversation starters or in, induce like just socialization like as part of the game um right rather than it being really i mean those games i would play a bernie too, sanders but... board game <laughs> uh so we've reached, big, we've reached big that big time <laughs> i'm sorry y'all i couldn't help myself i know but i would i mean i really would i think it would be fascinating <laughs> Herbiculum. I think it would get old fast. <laughs> Orbiculum is another word for a crystal ball. Oh. Come on, Chris. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, right? Like, of the, of the three people here, the two people that should know what a crystal ball is. <laughs> <laughs> but I had never heard that. I, didn't, I had never heard that before. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. I, well, I feel like this is a great example of... Um, so is his name Randall Monroe, XKCD, like, you know, awesome. You're one of the 10,000 people today, like on the learning a new, learning something new. Like, this is an exciting one. I feel like this is actually uh, like a, a one that I could like refer to and get people excited about without actually, having to set up. I mean, I, we have some orbiculums upstairs. Yeah. Perfect. I mean, if you gaze into your orbiculum, like immediately people know what you're talking about and have learned a new word. This is a fun one. <laughs> this is a fun one. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna what skip. Was... Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, please. I was gonna skip to Danette's uh uh contact my email. Yeah, do that. Um, so she says I'm really enjoying Gary's questions. Would love to hear some from Chris. Uh, congrats on your speedy correct answers lately. Maybe this is a sign that Gary and Chris should also submit topics. Uh, I'd love to see how Allison does at the at the guessing end of things. It's always fun to listen to the three of you banter while I'm making dinner, even if it does get a little dev heavy. Thanks for the informative entertainment. Ooh, I'm Ent about informative search. entertainment. That's what we, we've we made it as informative <laughs> entertainment. Uh, Info you're welcome, Danette. Thank cool you for listening. <laughs> you're our second fan. The first one is on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you're our number second fan. Number second. <laughs> I would actually like Danette to write back in and talk more about these dinners because we didn't cover enough food in this episode. It's true. So. It's true. Yeah. Like, I just... With what do you like cooking and talk through a recipe or something? 
Also, my laptop apparently needs a new battery because it says it's going to go to sleep unless plugged into a power outlet. So, mm. uh oh. So maybe I'll make it to the end. That'll yeah. be yeah. It'll, it'll be a race. Gaze into our orbiculum and see if I will be here in four minutes. <laughs> um, what do you? They don't think, work like that, do they? What do you think is the most underappreciated figure skating move? <laughs> uh, because I'm such an expert in in uh, in figure skating maneuvers, uh, I'm just gonna say a, a sow cow. Here's the thing, because that's the one I that like I can name. When I watch figure skating, I appreciate like there's figure skating, there's ice dancing. I appreciate the work these folks have put in, um, and it's one of those things where, like as a layperson, like looking at this, like and not being having this inside knowledge it's it's just impressive as hell that people can number one identify the difference in these spinny things they do yeah. like between a double and a triple and i go i just slow it down and like count them um and secondly um they can just like tell you exactly how and what part of the body they, and the part of their anatomy they need to keep tighter the next time they do it's really a fascinating thing so high level respect no idea how to answer the question <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how to. I don't. I don't know how to to rank something as being overrated or underrated, uh, <laughs> with regards to figure skating. Um, I think the move where they just balance on one leg and hold another leg out, like very, like parallel to the ice while mm -hmm. still skating and moving around. I feel like that's not a real wow move in ice skating, but to me, I think that's super impressive. <laughs> you know, I wonder too, though. Like uh, in my inline skating days. I just felt like I had it going on when I could skate with like on two wheels, like one on, you know, toe on one skate and then heel on the other skate. I wonder if I could have done that like on one skate and leaned forward and stuck my leg out. I'm pretty certain I would have fallen forward and like eaten the gravel. Probably. Cause there's, yeah. you know, a fair amount of balance that, that needs to be, need to be doing yoga, I, Gary. Yeah. I just got, I've done a bit of yoga in my life. I just got rid of my uh, inline skates, my la most recent pair. Um, when the kids started riding bikes, because I said, this is a combination that will cause me to break bones. Mm. I'm no spring chicken. Uh, or winter ch I'm not even a chicken at all. That's true. This season. That's true. Shocker. Yeah. News flash. You heard it here first. <laughs> I'm ignore, the, ignore the feathers, y'all. It's a. <laughs> Describe a your favorite movie's plot in five words Space, 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 space. <laughs> But yeah, but we can't tell what movie that is from just that. Uh, I feel like you could describe... Uh, Apollo 13. I, well, oh, gosh. I feel like now I want to do this. Like, describe space movies in five words that are all space. Like, you could just emphasize space in different ways. Like, Apollo 13 would be like, space, space, space! 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 And that'd be it. Like, it'd be, you'd be done. I would, I would watch that podcast or whatever you do with podcasts. <laughs> Consume it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Eat uh, the rich. The Le less than a minute, less than a minute. I, I will do this. Okay, so... Uh, uh, two words. Rec <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, two words. Record store, uh, DJ, mixtapes. Um. High Fidelity? I, I, yes. yes, I could see it. I could <laughs> see it in my head, and I couldn't remember the name of it. I could see the cover of it. At first, I was like, Empire I Records? And I was like, no. no. Not right. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Empire yeah. Records or High Fidelity? Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I was just like, no, don't say Empire Records. That's not, not a thing. Um, I should watch that. I haven't watched that in two years. Empire Records or High Fidelity? Oh, High Fidelity. High Fidelity. Yeah. Empire yeah, Records is the much. is the poor like tween version of High Fidelity. <laughs> um, Empire Records has the scene though, where I don't remember who shaves her head and then attempts suicide. Right? Sounds vaguely familiar. There's also a scene in The Royal Tenenbaums where a character attempts suicide, and I don't remember what song is playing there. But in my head, they're the same scene, even though they're not. They're totally mm. different. Actors in, in different Tenenbaum's, settings. It's, it's Elliot Smith. But. Yeah. Yeah, that's an intense movie. Yeah. Um, but I really like Wes but, Anderson movies generally. Uh, I do too. I, I Wes Anderson, I think, has this.
Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. <laughs>